Um, okay, guys. Chris Taylor from JNS at Oakmere, and um, this is your opportunity to see how rubbish I am um, on my ZX10 uh, track bike. Um, the guys have been mithering me for, for ages to put a camera on and uh, do some uh, do some laps so that you've got some footage. So, and I've been dodging it for ages, um, but I finally gave in and put a uh, Ghost X cam on, which seems pretty good. Microphone's a bit horrible in wind noise, but apart from that, it seems to work quite well, and, and the mounts are, are dead easy to mount. So, um, if you know how to turn it on, there is a couple of times where I've turned it on and forgotten to press record, which was a bit disappointing. But um, yeah, I've got to grips with it now. Uh, so here we are, uh, Alton Park. Um, this was the 16th of September, and the weather was a bit damp in the morning, but then it dried up and we were all right. Um, I run slicks. Um, because I've always run slicks, but even before when I had my 600, I used to run uh, treaded tyres, supercourses, Pirelli supercourses, but um, everyone said, listen, just run a slick. Uh, as long as your suspension is up to it, and you do need to get your suspension sorted, you can't just run it on road suspension, um, then you can run a slick and you'll get a great grip, uh, and it brings the bike on to another level, really. Um, I'm following Gary the uh one of the instructors this was a no limits day um uh but gary does mainly msv days and i'm back there again uh next week and hoping to catch up with gary and follow him out again um basically we went round um in the fast group we went round and he said just follow me for a bit and then you overtake me and i'll follow you and we'll see where we're up to and see where we can make some uh, some adjustments and some changes and, and some improvements to ride uh, faster but safer guys that's what it's about faster and safer um, as far as safety goes I don't think you can ride a bike in a safer environment at speed um, than on a track uh, on a track day an organized track day um, and I've, I've you know I just think it's the way forward um, I really enjoy it and if you've got a super bike and you're riding around on the road and you think you're going quick, mate, do a trap day. Then you'll see how slow you are. Uh, and I'm being serious. And I, I thought for years riding on the road, oh yeah, I'm really quick, I'm really quick. Oh my God, I was so slow, unbelievably slow because you ride the bike totally differently. Um, I can't recommend them enough. I love them. And if you've got the budget for it and the bike for it, just do it uh, as much as you can because you will love it. Um, there's loads of track day companies out there, focused events, no limits, uh, MSV run their own as well and they're all perfectly run, they're very well organised, you feel very safe, very secure and uh, you've got to behave yourself guys, you can't just go out there and treat it like a race day and if you do, you will be reprimanded and, um, but you know, other guys will get reprimanded as well so it makes you feel safe and secure um, and, and this is what it's all about for me. Um, talking some more right this is my zx10 uh, and um i've had it this is my second year i've had it now um it's got maximum suspension on it and a few other bits and pieces and tweaks the engine is stock it's got a pipe on it brembo calipers which are phenomenal compared to the standard ones i don't care what anyone says the standard calipers are fantastic i'm sure but you put brembo on Oh my God, it's going to stop you on a sixpence. That point there, one time at Alton, I nearly flipped the flaming thing over the top because I broke that hard in the front wheel. The back wheel came up in the air and I absolutely uh, made a mess in my trousers. But um, those brakes work so well, they're phenomenal. Um, together with uh, EBC, um, GPFX pads seem to work the best for me. I'm just passing Gary there. He says go past so he can follow me now. So the idea is I go for it. So basically that's the checkered flag for me and I'm going to go as hard as I possibly can and as quick as I can because the instructor's behind me so I want to impress him. And listen guys, no matter how much you try and stay calm, you can't help but ride like an absolute idiot and um, because you want to you you give the good impression, you know what I mean? So um, it's probably the wrong thing to do initially but then get your thoughts together, take a breath keep breathing and remember that you, you're here to learn so so uh, try and keep it as tight as you can um, the most important thing is hitting your braking mark markers and your apexes now those braking markers change change and the apexes and the way you approach the apexes change all the time 
uh, because your angle that you run through the corner and the pattern that you follow through the corner changes all the time depending on instruction. Um, now, I've been around, because it's my local track, um, I've been around it a million times and I think I know the quickest way round, but every time I go round there and I get some instruction, I find another little tweak in it somewhere where you approach a corner differently and you go round the corner differently and it gives you another, you know, tenth of a second or three tenths of a second or whatever. So you think you know a circuit and you don't, mate. You're learning it all the time and everybody will tell you that. Every experienced track day rider, every experienced racer will tell you that. You're, just, you're learning different tweaks all the time so you never fully know the circuit and which is the best way for you to ride on that particular machine um, until you ride it. Um, okay, yeah, coming. It's, it was a fairly busy day in the fast group. It was all right and it wasn't a fast, fast group. I, I tend to get, you know, you'll go out to Almeria in, in uh, January, February and there'll be a load of racers there and you'll run in the fast group and they'll kick you out of fast group because the pace of the fast group because it's full of races is just phenomenal so you end up going into into uh, intermediates or even or even novice there isn't strictly a novice one at uh, um at some of these some of these uh, uh, these track days because there are so many races there at the time especially out in spain um that you know the 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 novice speeds are equal to fast speeds in the uk you know at this time of year so um, but here we're, we're in, we're in uh, advanced group and uh, yeah, it's advanced really. The official terminology is novice, intermediate and advanced, not slow, uh, <laughs> in between us and fast. It's not that. So don't call it that. You've got to uh, talk, talk about the official terminology. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, it, it's, it's fairly busy day, but it's not too bad. Um, now, when you're overtaking, you've got to give a, a six uh, a six foot rule as well. So you've got to pass the guy with at least uh, six foot all around you. You know, a sort of bike's length um, and a, 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 a all around the, the guy you're overtaking. And that's the best way to keep it nice and safe. Uh, that guy's got his foot out there, so he's just giving you a little warning that he's slowing down, or maybe he's going in the pits, or or he's got a problem with his bike. So. If you stick a foot out, then whoever's approaching you knows that there's something going on and they will pass you cleanly and uh, I won't get, they'll know where you're up to basically. Um, I'm just sort of rambling through as I see stuff at the minute. Sorry if it's a little bit disorganised, but um, this is, it's just the way, uh, it, it's just the way it's coming to me. Um, so yeah, um, and, and we're going fairly steady here now. Uh, I used, I, I run slicks and I run Dunlops now, but for years I did run Pirellis, and I really love Pirellis. Pirelli Metzler, very similar compound, very similar tyres, and they were great. And then out in Almeria uh, last season, um, I didn't have any tyres. I bought some Dunlops. Some of the other guys that I'm with run Dunlops all the time, and they love them. Um, and they are a very different tyre to the Pirelli or the Metzler. The sidewalls are so much firmer. Um, compared to the Pirelli the Metzler. You pick up a Pirelli Metzler slick and it is so soft and you can bend it and manipulate it in your hand, um, including the, si the, 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 the side walls, whereas the Dunlop is a lot firmer. Um, and fitting them, it's not as easy to get on the rim either. But um, I really like these Dunlops now. I've got to tell you, I really enjoy riding them. And if anything, it, they, they appear to grip just as well for me and they last longer. So if you do uh, a day on a thousand in Almeria with a hot track temperature and you're going hard, you will, nine times out of ten, you'll only get a day, maybe a day and a bit, day and a half out of a rear. Um, you'll easily get a day and a half, two days out of a Dunlop, uh, a Pirelli, the, 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 the Dunlop. The Dunlop lasts that much longer than the Pirelli does. Um, so it's a, a day or maybe a day and a bit out of a Pirelli slick. Whereas I find I'm getting a day and a half, uh, two days out of a Dunlop slick. Um, so yeah, they, they work for me and I, I, I like them. So I'm, I'm going to stick with them. This, these particular ones were, um, I think the D20, are they D208s? Let's have a look. Um, yeah, uh, KR108s and 106. Um, and and they're, uh, they're great. I really like them. I like the way they, they wear up. I like the way they feel under the bike. You've not got as much squirming under power. Um, it doesn't, 
the, the, it doesn't. It, it, I can't say the probably moves around underneath you, but there's something you know if you're driving out of the corners or you're accelerating hard or you're braking hard. Sometimes you can feel the tire wall flex, and I know that sounds weird, and I'm presuming it's the tire walls flexing because people tell me that's what it is. Um, and you're running adequate temperatures, of course, and ad adequate uh, uh, pressures. But um, it just feels more solid. There's less squirming there. So you brake hard and it squirms less. You drive out, it squirms less. You know, you get less. You, you don't get, exactly get movement from the Pirelli on the back. It stays where it is, but it feels like it's squirming underneath you, whereas the, Pirelli, the, the Dunlop feels totally different. It feels um, more planted. Um, but it's personal choice, you know. Some people love them. I know Adam Jenkinson loves the Pirelli. Uh, me and, and uh, my, my brother-in-law Callum O'Shea who races loves a Pirelli won't venture onto anything else because that's what they're used to and they like it and yet other guys Terry Fuller who races he, he loves uh, he loves a um, he loves a, the Dunlops as well a lot of people speak highly of the Dunlops as well so um, it's it, it is personal choice um, so the thing to do really is to experiment once your bike's set up and you, you're comfortable with the way it is and the suspension's good enough just um, experiment and try different tyres um, there's uh, Gary's come past me again now so he's followed me for a few laps and now he's um, he's going ahead and the plan was I was to follow him and see what I could pull out of that out of his, his moves and the, and the way he does things differently um, we're going into Island Bend here so that's pretty much the same um, he goes if he can he goes nice and into the middle of the track going into shell and then up and then come back down again and exit and then run right over to the left hand side there now this is different gary does this really differently he turns the bike before he hits the apex to that chicane now he turns it before he hits apex where i i go into that chicane and i turn the bike on the chicane now if you turn it before the chicane it puts you in a different position on the track to attack the right hander and it makes the right hand exit um, easier the right hander and then the, the left hand exit a lot easier and I'd never done that before but uh, I followed him and tried it and it seemed to work later on um, after this we have a debrief and he tells me what he's done differently and, and what I could do differently after he's followed me so um, this is what I learned on that particular day in that chicane there it's uh, just to approach it slightly differently um, and the same with the with the, the chicane after um, uh, after Hilltop and uh, before um, uh, Nickerbrook, that chicane there, he, t he, he, he attacks that differently as well. And I'll talk you through it when um, when we get there. You see, I'm struggling to keep up with him now. <laughs> so I'm trying my best to learn from him, but to be honest with you, he streaked ahead a bit too much. But this was our first session together. So, you know, it's... Um, He's got. Uh, he's. You sort of build a rapport with a with an instructor, and they get to know you, and you get to know them, and then after a while, such as with Steve Brogan, I've had. St Steve's instructed me loads of times out in Almeria, Portimao, in the UK as well, um, and he understands me. I understand him, and I, I always get so much from him. Um, he's a great instructor, uh, Brogan is, but um, uh, this is my first time here with Gary. Um, but yeah, he. he peels into turns the going into the chicane here he turns it a lot earlier than the than the first apex he turns it before the apex runs it flat and then and then he makes the exit a lot easier apparently um and i tried it a few times and it did it seemed to sort of open the corner up a little bit now here you might not see him do it here oh there you go um because there's a bit of traffic but you will peel in and he holds it on a little bit longer so if you that first right under there he holds the bike down a little bit longer and then sweeps it back round so you don't sort of as soon as you you, you that hit that first right hand apex in the chicane and you see the next left hand apex coming up you don't go straight for it you hold it on a little bit longer and then it sort of makes that because you turn it later it makes that apex um a lot it's, it's a later apex coming out the left hand one and then that seems to smooth out the exit at Nickerbrook. And then, of course, you can get on the power a bit earlier. But, you know, I don't know. You'd have to speak to Gary about this. Apparently, he's, he's at most MSV um, meetings anyway. Um, so you can always catch up with him, ask him yourself. But um, this is what I got from him in this first, uh, this first uh, session uh, with him, which was great. I enjoyed. This guy's got his arm out here. I think 
Um, we might have had the checkered flag uh, just to slow us down a little bit here. So, oh no, he's, he's got, it looked like he got a bit of trouble actually there um, and he was peeling off. Um, uh, so yeah, I was running uh, Dunlop slicks. Tire pressures are weird in those. You're looking at the front tire pressure of 35, co uh, 35 hot PSI and in the rear 22. Um, so uh, that is what you would run, but keep your eye on those pressures. What I do is, and I've always been taught this from the start, as soon as I come in from the first session out, because the tires are nice and warm now, before you've even taken your gloves off, get the bike on the stands um, and check your tire pressures and you will be amazed at how they've increased or moved from where you first set them out. Um, if you're running 22 in the rear and you're you check them again and you're running 25 that's three psi it's increased by and you are getting a smaller contact patch because of that you know because the the pressure has increased because of the heat in the tire and the contact patch between the tire and the ground has decreased because the pressure's a lot higher so you so immediately you let it out and drop it down to 22 again um for the guys that only check them once in a blue moon or once at lunchtime guys you're risking you know you're you're risking coming off or you know sliding or even coming off the bike so i check them every single time i come in and do the fronts as well just to make sure the front doesn't move around quite as much the, the pressure doesn't seem to increase or move around quite as much as the rear does but the rear obviously gets really hot so keep your eyes on that for me it's a no-brainer you've got to do it every time and you know exactly where you're up to then um there we go just pulling into the just pull into the pits and what I'll do is pull into my garage now and pull up and then I'll go down and see Gary. We'll have a debrief and he'll tell me where we're up to and what's going on. By the way, this instruction was completely free, um, which is great. Uh, and I'll leave it there.